Hey, James back from Barber Creek Long Range Hunting and Shooting School. We're going to talk about proper bench shooting techniques. Now, I got it, we don't hunt from a bench, but if we hunt from a blind, this is going to be very similar. But the other thing is everything we do on a bench should really have parity with what we do on the ground. And one of the biggest things I want to talk about is letting the gun function like it's supposed to. A lot of people fight the gun and they torque it, can't it, and then they put too much torque on it by over gripping and mounting the gun. When we were all kids, we were all taught basically to put the gun or the buttstock of the rifle in our pocket. And what that does is if we do that is when the gun fires, it allows the gun to kick off to the right for a right hand and shooter in the barrel left. I'll have a heck of a time getting back on target to see if I hit my animal. Now, in the military world, my background as a sniper, I always had a spotter who told me where I hit. But in a hunting world, I always don't get to have somebody with me. So I need to see if the bullet impacts the animal or it doesn't. To do that is I'm going to tell you to do something a little bit different. Take the gun, line it up, and then put your body as horizontal as possible towards the target. And then pull the gun back, same thing with the bipod, and then force it forward by preloading it. And if you notice, when I lean right into the gun, I'm horizontal towards the target. I'm going to keep saying that because it's really important. Now, when this gun recoils, it's going to literally come straight back. I'll take my upper body mass, and I'm going to force it right back into target or into battery. And I'll literally see my bullets hit my animal. That's pretty important for what we do for long range. The other thing is don't fight the gun. This gun will naturally recoil straight and have what we call a straight line recoil as long as you have a good front rest and a good rear rest. Now this is a big leather bag, but you know, you can take a sock and what we used to do is fill them with rice. Don't do that anymore. Nowadays, just go to Walmart or someplace and just get yourself some airsoft pellets and fill it with it. Or you can just buy aftermarket bags, but you got to have a rear support. If you don't, when the gun fires, it will drop in the back and cause vertical stringing at long range. So I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot the gun at just 600 yards just to show this. And I'm going to get behind it and put my body horizontal and do it like I'm supposed to. And you'll watch the impact. And then I'm going to let the gun shoot itself. And I really mean that. So stand by. Let me get loaded. And I'm going to shoot it at 600 yards. Again, 6.5 caliber. I'm going to go ahead and shoot at target number two. Wind is left to right at about three mile an hour. Here we go. I'm going to give it about a quarter minute left one. Here we go. Stand by. Okay, saw the impact. I literally hit about a half to three quarter inches just off the bullseye at about 3.30. I saw everything. I saw the bullet hit, no issues. Now we're going to do the same thing and I'm going to let the gun shoot itself. And again, if you don't fight the gun and let it do everything it's supposed to, here we go, stand by. Same target, 600 yards. All right. Nice hit. I hit the target. Wasn't even behind the gun. Let the gun do itself. This is another downrange shooting tip from James at Barber Creek Shooting Academy. Thank you very much.